I'm, uh, my, my name is Marcus Boam and I'm uh, an artist and um, I started uh, planning this project together with Matt Carlson about a year and a half ago. Uh, we, my son was playing Minecraft and uh, we, when we saw him playing uh, we saw a few different things that we thought was really interesting and uh, for one of the basic things is that uh, we saw this overlapping field. They're actually uh, building, uh, making buildings, making architecture in a digital environment, uh, which is the same as arch architects do, uh, but they have different programs. But they actually had a bit of the same structure. Uh, so, so there was a sort of an overlapping field of, uh, they were actually doing the same thing in different, uh, from different perspectives. So the interesting thing was how do we just connect these two together? Uh, and also connecting the world of architecture and the world of um, uh, gaming, since uh, making games is uh, also part of architecture. I mean, many, many people today spend a lot of time in games, actually have a big relation to space and, and volume and room, which is, digital and it actually is um, is virtual uh, spaces and virtual architecture that doesn't exist in real life but it becomes a part of their experience um, so uh, we uh, were trying to find a way uh, to connect them and uh, decided to make this project Blockholm which is um, Oh, I need to uh, make this, ch oh, I have this next. Um, we uh, wanted to make this project in, in Stockholm and Stockholm has, um, has many big urban areas, a lot of uh, housing discussions and uh, especially as the problem in many European towns that we have um, a big part of the city is a lot of old, uh, buildings, uh, a lot of heritage, a lot of things to uh, that we want to keep, and how should we uh, make new things in this old and a special uh, a big discussion in Stockholm. Uh, so the idea was to uh, think of making ex an experiment of um, uh, using a thought model uh, is uh, to to try the idea to start all over again and, and, and see what, if, if you don't relate to anything of the old, if everything is gone and you turn over a new page, uh, what would you do? This is the thought model and, and you can, of course, you can apply that because then you perhaps, um, it's a way of, 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 uh, of just trying new ideas. Uh, so uh, the way we did it was actually we um, took uh, Stockholm's uh, land data, uh, which is digital, and uh, and uh, transferred it into uh, the game in Minecraft. Uh, I do, you're probably quite familiar with Minecraft. This is the creator of Minecraft. Uh, this huge success uh, in gaming. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, I can just tell you about it in short. Uh, it's, you come to, into a world with uh, blocks, and in the world the block is uh, one by one meter. And you have a lot of different kind of blocks, you put them, just add them together. Uh, and um, this uh, game has had an enormous success. Uh, and uh, I don't think very many actually understand so what it's about and I, and I actually think that the makers of Minecraft don't really understand what it's about um, and I think that's why it works so well because they're afraid of changing anything and it's, it's sort of stands, uh, stays and the, they keep sort of the core because uh, they don't know what's good so they just stay which is I think that why it work, works and I'll try to tell you a little about, about it um, you build things by adding blocks, um, 
and uh, one thing is about it, it's, as people call it, it's a g that it's a game, but it's actually not a game, because uh, you can't win anything, uh, there's no levels, uh, there's nothing you can do, but that uh, this arena or this platform that you can use for different things. So the first uh, thing you use it for is just building, trying out things, trying structures. Um, the next thing you do is um, you uh, perhaps visit servers. You can make up a server, uh, you can start this game, and other people can uh, visit your server and start building together. Uh, and then the next thing after that is that uh, at this core there's this program Minecraft, but around Minecraft there's a whole culture of uh, mods, which is modifications, which is add-on programs, which adds features to the servers. And here is what's really interesting about Minecraft, because the game is just sort of a core function, it's building blocks uh, in a way. But uh, this whole community of mods uh, can change the rules of of your um, of your world. You can have economy. Um, what's happening here now? I'll just continue. Uh, I'm an artist, so it's just basically just pictures, <laughs> no texts. I can. Um, so, um, yeah, so all these servers have different rules and they're all kind of different experiments. And yeah, some, some make traditional games on it, it can be like Hunger Games, some make uh, different kinds of uh, collaborations, they're building cities, they have different kinds of economy, they're just some kind of uh, experimental grounds uh, of different sorts. So, um, well, it's really interesting. It's interesting that it's a very big uh, generation of kids and also grown-ups that uh, are using this space uh, today. And uh, we have 50 million people that are playing it. Uh, they're doing architecture, but they're also doing a lot of uh, social negotiation. And they're, they're building up uh, structures where they're trying out different uh, rules and um, ways of communicating, uh, experimenting on, on, on social structures. And that uh, is something that's quite fascinating. And, and, and when it comes to Minecraft, it's, uh, the, the phenom phenomenon, it's um, when everybody talks about the game, uh, and a, a traditional game cor curve, like a movie or a book, it goes, if it's a hit, it goes up like this, and then it goes down. Uh, and Minecraft went up like this, and everybody was really amazed that an independent game made for one from one developer could be such a smash hit. But the thing is that it stayed up here, and it continued to stay up here, and it's continued and continued for three or four years. Under this peri period of time, the big studios make a, a game for uh, perhaps 100 million Swedish crowns. It gets up, it gets up. And two years later, they have to put 100 million more until for the next one. But this is basically the same, and it stays. So people uh, really can't understand what happened. But that's because they're asking the wrong questions. It's not the question of a game success, because you could, for example, say um, that Facebook is very um, successful for being a game. But it's, of course, Facebook isn't a game. That's why nobody asked for Facebook 2 or what's the next thing Mark Zuckerberg is going to do. Uh, this is a community. And the same thing applies to Minecraft. It's actually not a game. And what they do at Mojang that produce it is not the interesting thing. They're interesting what's happening in the community. What do people do with Minecraft? And that's. Uh, why it lives so long, and why it's probably going to stay on living, because it develops. It's, there's so many ways to go when you start going out from the core game into all these mods and the different worlds. 
uh, you, you can find, uh, depending on your interests, you can go in, into, into di different, different di directions and after a while perhaps you end up developing the whole structure of it. So um, we opened up Blockholm. Um, we uh, had the whole um, the whole uh, land data converted into Minecraft, uh, which is um, we we had the from suburbs from um, Tegensta down to Skärholmen, uh, and we have the all the geographical data and the roads uh, and the parks uh, and the small uh, paths in the in the parks uh, but we have no buildings uh, so we, we took also the um, the fastighets real estate also real estate data and converted that into a system with lots so every existing building is an area uh, and we made a system where everybody that goes into the game gets a lot to build on and you can only build on that lot yourself and nobody else so you cannot destroy anybody else you build your own um, building uh, but apart from that, we also had a space, uh, which is Djurgården, uh, which we had uh, f as a free space where you can build anywhere, uh, together with others or alone. You can continue building on others, you can destroy other people's things uh, as, an, as, as an area for just uh, testing out how things work or, or how, how you self-organize in a way. Uh, and um, it's a, we've been running for two months now. We have uh, about seven thousand buildings built, uh, and this project is in two parts. So this uh, the the digital gaming part is going to continue until the summer, and the sixth of March we're open uh, the exhibition in the Center for Architecture and Design in Stockholm, where we're going to tell the stories about the building, about the block home, the, the, the people, so people who built it, what they built, and uh, what kind of implications it has, and from what kind of area it, it, it um, what, they, what it relates to. Uh, and, I mean, one, one of the interesting parts from it is uh, connecting, connecting in games perhaps and children and play with uh, society and the uh, city plannings, uh, the architects uh, and one uh, cross we want to do is that we want to uh, take the real world to the kids that they actually uh, see that what they do uh, is actually part of society and can be a part and perhaps will be a part in the future. But we also wanted to build, uh, bring uh, play to the city planners. Mm. That uh, by playing actually you can find another way of uh, being creative to find uh, other solutions. Uh, and you can have perhaps a different attitude to your work and to what you do uh, with play and thinking of fun, for example, and, uh, and, and, and play and fun uh, is uh, something very closely connected to every creative um, uh, kind of line of work, and especially when it comes to artists, uh, is play and fun is to be open to and a bit of spontaneous uh, to, uh, for new solutions, and also uh, to be open in uh, discussions with other people. Um, so this uh, is a way of thinking of a platform. And um, yesterday we had um, the chief architect, 
stadsarkitekter för Stockholm, Carolina and Don, uh, who is uh, editor of architecture, mm. and they were uh, uh, in a jury that were trying to discuss what kind of buildings we will uh, uh, build from Stockholm into the exhibition. And a few others, and they were all new to Minecraft. And uh, what happens when you uh, come out of your safe zone? I mean, they start playing a game. Um, and um, there are these kind of clashes that happens. And sometimes it's weird and fun, but they're uh, seeing their own uh, line of work uh, from a different perspective. They're flying around as blocky guys and uh, crashing into each other. And uh, for example, uh, one, one, one way was we were work warping from two places to another and Carolina suddenly found herself in, inside the Don's head, <laughs> which was a bit weird. Um, it doesn't happen in real life, really. Um, so, um, it's a question of, of, of making a platform uh, and uh, showing uh, how, this, how this kind of platform can work and we want other people to use it. It has been used in a few different uh, places. Uh, Byggkjent has, has made some small projects which you uh, mentioned. Mm -hmm. Uh, one big uh, project uh, is you and Habitat are using Minecraft for uh, their uh, public space uh, pro project where, they, where they're redesigning public spaces in 300 different places in the world in two years and for about uh, half of these projects they're going to use Minecraft. And Pontus who is uh, head of this uh, project uh, started using Minecraft and for him uh, he said the difference was uh, enormous uh, because uh, it's a question of, um, of communication uh, when when they come to an area start to discuss it's there are so many clashes in uh, culture and knowledge and uh, uh, so uh, so when they come with a plan, uh, even if they have images and so, so on, it's very difficult to discuss. But when you um, put everything in a world and everybody can walk around in the world, uh, it's so much easier to discuss and uh, and. Uh, yeah, let's see the difference. I mean, you walk around and you can see, you can easier, more easier to see how you can mo sort of move a building. You think this should be moved a bit, or this road should be in another direction or something. Uh, something that's also interesting is that if you talk about architecture and city planning, um, Minecraft, uh, which is a very, um, I'll try to start this, these pictures again. I will uh, <coughs> sort of uh, still plan from you. What? Uh, you try this. Okay. Uh, one thing that's interesting about Minecraft is that um, it's, uh, it's not very advanced in how you make shape. Uh, which uh, in uh, architecture can be a good thing because uh, when you talk to architects there's one thing of making the digital model but uh, one thing that's uh, important and interesting is that just drawing with a pen and paper and using cardboard is a very good way of presentation because uh, you can discuss it and it's not really finished just a, uh, a sketch and a sketch can be changed so when you talk uh, to people it's sometimes easier to discuss when you have pen and paper and you have cardboard when you have a digital perfectly rendered pictures uh, people get afraid and say it, it looks so finished they're afraid of changing it and especially having all these reflections of glass and it looks so fantastic 
but when you have cardboard or, or when it's a bit uh, clumsy, you can easily see uh, the important things. As, uh, how big is the space? Uh, how, how, how is the volume? How does it work? And how, how do I participate in this, uh, uh, in this area or this volume? Um, uh, so so um, that's what the CDR architect uh, connected to a lot yesterday. Uh, that um, the clumsiness is actually uh, an advance. It's, it's a good thing for it because it's uh, easier to see the main problems and, and see how it works. It's, it's not a question of finish, it's not a question of, of, uh, of the small details. You see the big picture. Uh, I, I can finish here, and um, I'm sorry you lost uh, <laughs> the images of Blockholm, because I, you could see how it... Maybe if we will let your computer sort of... Uh, uh, actually, the, it's, it's working here. I could just make you one minute, and I'll just... You can see some uh, pictures yep. of what, what, what okay. it looks like. Okay. Um, you've seen these images. Uh, this is um, what Blockholm looks, looks from, from above. Uh, it actually looks quite real and it looks like a real map. Um, and this is the structure of uh, so real estate uh, yeah. data that we used. Uh, ah, forget the story. It's, uh, I can make it fast. We uh, started the server, it was empty, nobody was there, it was Stockholm was empty, and suddenly this guy turned up. And nobody, we thought, had the access to the server. <laughs> so I said, what are you doing here, Sludi? And he says, oh, I, I work at the real estate office in Nacka, <laughs> which was, we actually had left the address there because we needed data. <laughs> mm. um, which is fun in the way of, of meeting. He says as an avatar, he has designed his own skin, and uh, uh, and we meet in a totally different uh, way. <laughs> and uh, and here is uh, um, when uh, Gamla Stan started building. We started with uh, Gamla Stan, so this is the, it, it went so fast. We started with, we got with Gamla Stan. We, we thought we have a few days. It took hours until it was fully booked <laughs> and we had to release uh, Stor Essingen and we also had to release Aspen in the same day and we wanted to have it for a few weeks we hoped <coughs> but uh, and this is how many now they're buildings every you see them from about this was the cha chaos of the first hours of uh, Gamma so um, yeah uh, it's 7,000 buildings, so I don't remember how the place is, but uh, you can see, uh, here, here you see it's a bit chaotic, and I think I have an image of what it looks like in Djurgården, so uh, <laughs> this is Djurgården. And, and uh, here you can see the self-organizing system. We started Djurgården, so how to work with Djurgården. People started building things, but destroying each other things. And after two days, uh, we got a mail, people destroying a lot of stuff. Uh, and, and the kid says, I want to be a moderator. Mm -hmm. uh, we said, okay, you can be one. Then I got another mail and another mail. And soon, soon there were so many moderators, I had to have a, a guy that took care of the moderators. So we got another one that, and they started the community of taking care of Djurgården, uh, because that's, Djurgården is, is their own space. Uh, so they're actually running Djurgården, uh, the participants. And this is in a one kilometer long uh, airplane outside uh, over Globen Arena, which is situ situated on Djurgården now. Well, there are actually two Globen in. This is going to start. We have a lot of windmills for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, it's a popular feature. And this is uh, our first sketch of the exhibition. So we're going to build up uh, 10 projects from the Blockcom projects into uh, the exhibition uh, and yeah, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, I'll finish there. Okay, thank you Marcus.